How's it going? This is Dr. Dave Tran. I have a friend, colleague, mentor, chiropractor, Dr. Jason Gerard. How's it going? How's it going? Yeah. So thank you so much for being with us today. So how did you get started in chiropractic school? Well, I, uh, <clears throat> so long time ago, at least long time ago to me, um, I was a big, I was a hockey player and I was scouted division one college hockey as a goaltender. And I developed a condition called exercise induced asthma. Long story short, told the rest of my life I need to be on an asthma inhaler. So I decided in college that I might want to try out this thing called chiropractic. And uh, I remember the first day I went into the guy's office. Um, I laid, in fact, I was there just to actually like watching to see, you know, cause I was, I wanted to be in the medical world. I didn't know which part of the medical world and I was witnessing him and he, and he had listened to me all day and he looks at me and he goes, what's that thing in your pocket? And I said, well, you know, it's my asthma inhaler. And he goes, can I see it? And I said, sure. And he, looks at it, checks out, and chucks it in the garbage. Oh, wow. He goes, and if you need this when you're done, he goes, uh, uh, have a nice day, essentially. And he goes, if you don't need this anymore, he goes, you just found your profession. Well, long story short, sitting in a landfill in the middle of uh, the state of Minnesota <laughs> is probably still sitting my uh, asthma inhaler. And, you know, 20, 25 or more years later, uh, I have never um, looked back on that. And that's, that's really where the metamorphosis began or began. Yeah, that's awesome. And like, do you remember what it was like uh, in chiropractic school for you? Yeah, you know, it's, it's weird. You know, you look back on it. Uh, you know, now I look at how strong our philosophy is and how strong, um, you know, I stand for the principle of, of what we do. And I can't remember in, in college, I, was, I, was kind of, I wasn't really like, I was kind of just in the middle. Like I always like mm -hmm. love that, the side work, the pureness of what chiropractic was. And so I got my grades passed, whatever, you know, <laughs> I, I did what I needed to do. But as the years in school went on, I started to be more and more attracted to those that were more and more passionate about what it was that they did. And I felt that if I was going to do this thing for life, I might as well really like it. So, yeah. you know, and, and it seemed like everyone else who wasn't passionate, it was just a job. And I don't want a job. Exactly. So, yeah. So you graduated chiropractic school. Uh, what was next for you? I started right from a dirt floor that I'm you know, sitting in the office of uh, you know, a new building and a dirt floor. And, uh, and I started from scratch. It's the saying, go big or go home. I figured, uh, let, let's just go all in. And, and I really, the key, you know, I had worked at seven different offices before and I really, you know, liked all of them for different reasons um, and didn't like parts of all of them for different reasons too. Sure. And what I realized was, you know, if I wanted it done my way, I just I said, let's just do this on my terms, you know, and if we're going to make it, let's make it. And if not, at least I'm going out on my style, my terms. Mm, and so sure. we began a, a family-based, wellness-based cash, you know, pretty much all cash-based practice. And I said, yeah. you know, my parents laughed at me. They told me I was crazy and they told me there was no <laughs> chance back in the day I could get a loan or whatever. And, you know, the miracle of grace of God, you know, we, we did and, and we yeah. were able to pull it off. And, and I'm looking back now, it's awesome to not be dependent on all of the things that most offices are dependent on, like Blue Cross Blue Shield or something exactly, like right. that. Exactly. You know, that's huge, you know, because, you know, I know like a lot of chiropractors are, uh, you know, going through the, the trials and tribulations, but also the joys, you know, and the and happiness mm -hmm. of, of, have, of being an entrepreneur as well. I mean, what are some things that, you know, kept you grounded uh, throughout the way? Well, I mean, a lot of things. I mean, I'll tell you one thing then, especially if there's if your students on the line, I mean, nobody ever does this anymore. But for those of you who are crazy enough to actually take me up on this, you know, I, I you know, I, I went door to door. <laughs> I mean, like, I'll tell you, I wanted to, I canvassed the town, hundreds and hundreds of houses. And it was the hardest thing mentally that I had to do prior to doing, it, if that makes sense. Sure. It was the scariest thing I'd ever done. It did, but I looked at, I looked at, Everybody hates, they all, we all say we hate politicians, and yet what do they do? They go door to door, and none of them are, they're fearless. They go door to door, honest. And I yeah. thought, well, boy, if we all say we can't stand politicians, but they go door to door. I'm like, I, I can't be, but anything but greeted. And so certainly, um, I remember stories of me going door to door, house to house, <laughs> and it started to ground something in me about who I was and what I stood for. Yeah. And I'll tell you, man, it, it, it's the roots of what began, um, the beauty of what this thing is. So that way, you know, if someone comes in my office and tries to tell me how it's going to be, I'm like, you weren't there in the lean days when I had to go door to door and make 500, 700 visits, you know, uh, to the doors of houses. And, and, you know, and at the same time, it built, it, it taught me a lot about who I was and what I stood for, because that's what people wanted to hear. They wanted to see what it is. What do you do different or unique from anybody else in the world in what you do? 
You know, and that's huge. I mean, like, I, I was not expecting you to say that as well, too, because I, I, I've yet to go on door to door. But now I'm like, hey, you know, this is what I'm, uh, I'm inspired to do now. I, I, I just might take you up on that challenge. So, well, awesome. let, me, let me just tell you just a funny story. When you do go door to door, I had friends that have, you know, like all the cops in town know who you are. They, do, <laughs> yeah, they, do, they, they literally arrest you, but they don't arrest you because they ask you what you're doing. Like the first <laughs> house I ever went to, I remember I was so scared. I, I remember, and I wore a blue um, denim shirt with khakis because I figured that was the least uh, confrontational look that <laughs> a person could ever have. And I remember I waited, and, and the, I, I sat on this road called July Avenue, oh. and I sat on the road for over an hour. I went up and down the street. I was so nervous to get out of my vehicle the first time I ever did. And I remember there was this, like, this 80 to 90-year-old lady that finally got out of her car, hobbled into her house, and I figured this lady cannot shut the door on my face or yell at me. So I literally, she was the first person I ever went to. By the time I hit to the third door, a lady just got out of the shower, and she's like, do you want to come in? I'm like, okay. I'm like, this is door-to-door thing. not so bad. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, no, I, was, I love my wife. I'm just uh, but, no, it, you know, it was an experience where I sat there. I had coffee with more people in, in, their, in their rooms, even at, you know, I mean, it was, it was, like I said, it was, it sounds wild and crazy, but if you really stand for something, you know, some of the greatest, uh, some of my greatest long-term people I met 20 some years ago, you know, and when I walked in their house and they wanted, you know, they wanted, I asked them about the community. I asked them what, you know, what, why, why here? Why should I practice here? I asked them, I actually had, I, instead of begging you for, as patients, I said, why should I be here? And tell me about it. And so it's one of the many things besides building a practice in, in so many ways to do that. But I'll tell you, it was, it was great. That's awesome. You know, and along the way, you know, like you became a part of Cairo Mission. Um, so, so how did that come about? Well, it's funny because right? anyone who's ever served on a mission trip knows that one of the greatest experiences is going door to door. So it's funny how that was just, you know, to me, it's just like a normal thing. Uh, uh, but, you know, I uh, so so long story short, uh, you know, I practices has been and was really great and there's a lot of things were really happening and, and clicking and um, but there was something I felt that was missing like there was just there's something bigger uh, beyond I mean everything I was getting you know everyone was coming to me and giving me something paying whatever you want to call it but I just never I felt that you know I've always said you know I, I would say give 10% to God and I always felt that you also give 10% to the planet and that was just my thing I wanted to give the 80 20 principle and I just, you know, I was, I was in church, caught a message and it hit me between the eyes. Like I'm just not doing enough for the planet. I mean, everything I'm doing is for me. And so I showed up on a, on a Cairo mission trip. And uh, like many of you that are just on a wing and a prayer, I was at a time in my life when I had some freedom, I could do it. And uh, I, I was blown away and it was one of the, and has been continues to be probably the most impactful thing on how I view humanity uh, in the world today. Yeah, you know, that's awesome, you know, and, you know, so what countries have you gone to so, so far? Well, pretty much in the Caribbean, we've done, you know, everything from the Dominican Republic to Haiti to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I've done stuff in Cuba. Uh, I was on a cruise ship with uh, my wife at the time in, in Granada, and I just stepped out and started acting like I was on a mission, and she's like, this is a vacation, really? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I went to the hospital, like, at, there, and, and I was like, I'm ready to serve. What do you, what do you guys have? And of course, uh, you know, that, that was, that was, an, it worked yeah. out, but they were like a little surprised that someone on vacation might want to do that. But it just is kind of who, you know, I, I am. And yeah. there's a lot of you out there that have that itch or that niche or that uh, feeling that you want to do something more. And gosh, you know, this thing called chiropractic that we have is so unique. Um, gosh, why don't we want the world to have it? You know, and that, yeah. that's always what I've said. You know, and then in your own personal experience, what kind of impact um, has Cairo Mission and doing mission trips in you know, these different communities all, all around the world has, has, uh, has, have you seen happen? Well, an incredible, you know, I mean, it's always interesting. Like I'll look at it because we run a, a pretty big retention based practice. So the vast majority of our people inside our office have been here for years and, uh, and I'm big about you know, lifetime care. And so when I have a patient and a practice member who has been here for 10, 15, 20 years, and I go on a mission trip, they always tend to ask the, the higher level questions. And, and one of the higher level questions they ask me is, um, you know, you're going down there, which is great, but you're only going to give one adjustment or how do you know you'll ever see them ever again? And, I, and, it, and it's always an interesting question that's posed to me. And what I try to say to that, to answer kind of your question, mm -hmm. kind of on a roundabout way, is, is you start a grass fire. 
So what, as just an example in Cairo, Michigan, when we started in the Dominican Republic, for example, there was no chiropractors. There was not, not any in a country of 9 million people. Yeah. And, you know, and, and so we started grass fire and, and that grass fire turned into the people there wanting to go back and deliver chiropractic or chiropractors wanting to go down there and stay. Mm-hmm. I mean, now you look at the Dominican Republic, there's a dozen to 20 offices down there from different people in different ways, different groups and things. And I'll tell you that grass fire has turned into people. And when we go down there to adjust the young people, they get on fire and some of them want to go back to the States. Maybe they want to go down there and learn through school. That's the whole idea is you create a culture that's self-sufficient to be able to take care of themselves. But here's what I love is we were able to deliver the chiropractic message in a congruent way. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a pain-based message. It wasn't a message if your insurance covers it. It wasn't a message if you feel like it or if you, if you're out, it was a message where you get checked because you brush your teeth and you do, you know, you drive your car. I mean, it was just, it's a lifestyle. And that was what's cool is you're able to take and filter a message in, in the way that we would say it was a pure message and at the same time, a congruent message. You know, you know, and that's awesome. You know, and then, you know, like, so you've, you've worked with a lot of different chiropractors and chiropractic students going down there as well too. Um, I mean, so what's some advice that you would give to, you know, chiropractor or chiropractors that's, you know, remotely interested in joining in on a, on a mission trip? Yeah. So if I spoke just to chiropractors first, the most common thing we see with chiropractors and why a mission trip just changes everything. And that is that, we, we do this thing called chiropractic, which is awesome, but nobody wants the, the dirty secret, you know, is that it's a grind. I mean, anyone who tells you it's not is lying to you. I mean, I, yes, we love our people and yes, we love everything. You know, we love to serve and adjust. Yeah, but we all know that that's not 100% of everything that we do. And for those who, who of us who've gotten involved in insurances and plans and, 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 staff and, and it wears you down right and what's really pure and beautiful about serving is you go back to the roots of what you really stood for and i can't tell you the countless number of hundreds of doctors over the years that have said this is how i want to practice this is what i missed this is why i got into it in the mm-hmm. first place and this is who i really am and you become this person that you you really were but when you go home it's almost like you became this person you're kind of just you're almost like i'm 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 i'm, I'm, I'm in a play and i'm performing instead of being who you really are authentically now, as far as students are concerned, I mean, holy smokes. I mean, you, you just, the laundry list is, you know, the fear of putting your hands on people, the fear of going up to someone you've never met before and saying, hey, you need chiropractic care. That's probably even bigger than adjusting. Mm-hmm. A lot of times the students are so worried about adjusting. Actually, you're, you should be more worried about communication because yeah. most of us in today's culture can't communicate with people. They can't, we can't look someone in the eyes with certainty and say, I have the answer. I might have the answer. Um, making relationships with uh, others to realize, uh, realize the passion of the, proving the proof of what chiropractic does. I mean, you know, a mission trip, as you know, Dave, you know, um, is, is one adjustment because when someone has no help, you know, one adjustment is pretty dramatic sometimes, Absolutely. you know, and, and so you'll see that with people and it's incredible. So, so, I mean, you just go down the laundry list and then the final thing is you come back as a student, you're never the same. You know, you realize that you're going to all this school for something bigger than just going to school. And if you're just stuck in school, you never see that. And that's the problem. Too many kids get out, students get out, they just don't realize the power of what they have in their hands. You know, that's so awesome. You know, that's some valuable advice. I hope you guys had a pen and paper to write down all of that stuff. Um, thank you so much for everything you, like, you've done for uh, chiropractors and chiropractic students, you know, all this time. If you want to reach out to Dr. Jason, uh, Facebook him, you know, give him a call. Uh, he's super easy to get a hold of. And Dr. Jason, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, and one last thing, if I could just throw two cents in. Absolutely. And, and that is, uh, so, you know, Cairo Mission, we, we've, uh, you know, done this a long time. And, and you know, with our, our, our friends now, our new best friends at, at Spinal Missions. Absolutely. And, and I can tell you, you know, we, you know, together, um, our two organizations, are, we're going to reach, you know, if you haven't jumped on our trips, I mean, you know, we run such a similar trip of belief and passion and power. And I tell you, you know, between what we're doing in the Dominican, um, and Haiti and what you guys are doing in Jamaica, El Salvador, um, you know, students, doctors, you know, get yourself on these trips. These are really where things change and we're just excited to be teamed up with you guys and partners. Yeah, 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 me too, as well too. So awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Sounds good.